This is no, you were not. Yeah. You get over it. But I'm going to call her my personal lady, Macbeth. Hi. Oh, Her husband, Lord Macbeth, the thane of powder and the thane of whatever, has one line in the middle, which is the catalyst for the second part. Very important. But yeah, you've got to tell this, this audience oh. what it yeah. means, oh. and then, then before you do it. Okay. Um... This is from Act 1, Scene 3 of Macbeth. Uh, just to give you a preview, basically what's happened is uh, Macbeth is a very successful general, and he has just won a very important battle. And after the battle, he runs into, as you probably know, the famous three witches who give him a prophecy of what will become to him, what he will be. And... Uh, his head is inflated, he you know, believes in these superstitious powers, and he writes this letter to uh, his wife, Lady Macbeth, telling her of his uh, coming good fortune. And then when he goes home to see her, she immediately begins to plot, along with him, how to fastest attain his fortune instead of, basically the idea is the, the last fortune the witches give uh, Macbeth. This is that he will become king. So it's very quickly Lady Macbeth and Macbeth figure, well, the quickest way for you to realize your fortune is to kill the present king. So they begin to plot to do this. The king is staying at their house. Um, at the last moment, Macbeth gets cold feet, so to speak, and wishes not to... Uh, uh, go through with this thing, and he, he goes um, back to Lady Macbeth, and he says, I'll just read you this, we will proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people, which would be worn now if their newest gloss not cast aside so soon. And then very quickly after that, Lady Macbeth um, attacks Macbeth for giving up on the plan of killing King Duncan. And the speech, or rather this little part of the scene that Roger and I are going to do, um, you, what, you, what you get the idea of is really pure evil, evil for its own sake. Um, because what she goes through, she... she castigates the guy, says, look, you're not a man. If you can't do this, you'll never be a man. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I'm more of a man than you are, and if you don't believe me, listen to what I'm going to tell you, how we're going to accomplish this. And so this is the speech, and then, of course, after that, they carry through the murder of Duncan. <clears throat> What beast was it then that made you that made you break? What beast was it then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so nor time nor place. Nor time nor place did then adhere, but you would make up. They have made themselves, that their fitness now does unmake you. I have given suck and know how tender tis to love the babe that milks me. Yet I would, while it was smiling in my face, pluck my nipple from his boneless gums and dash his brains out, had I so sworn to do as you have done. If we should fail... We fail? 
Duncan is asleep, whether to the rather shall he by his hard day's journey. Will I who? Oh, his two chamberlains will I with wine and wassail so convince the memory, the water of the brain shall be a fume. Seat of reason in that cold. When in swinish sleep, when in swinish sleep, his drenched, their drenched na uh, natures lie as in a death. What can not you and I? Upon the unguarded Duncan. What not put upon his spongy officers? Uh, who shall bear the guilt of our great crime? You forgot something like me, but a good speaking voice. You get the presence, you know the play. Huh? You stand on my lines. <laughs> <laughs> good. That was 